Hi everyone, let us just dive into today's question. If God has omniscience, how does free will exist? As usual, I'm going to break it out a bit. Uh, so omniscience means that this person is all-knowing. So our God is a God who knows everything, which includes the choices that we will make you know, in, re- in regards to this question. So if God knows everything, including my choices, do I truly have free will? My answer to this is yes. Why? I actually shared this in another video before because having the knowledge of something is not the same as causing something to happen. So the example that I like to give is like a weather station. A weather station track and analyze different data that they have and they can make accurate predictions about the weather in the near future. So for like Singapore, it has been forecasted that uh, for October, it'll be a warm month. You know, but no one will think that NEA is there causing all these things to happen, causing the weather to be so warm, or they are making the weather so warm by some means. Certainly not, right? Because forecasting the weather does not equal to them making the weather this way. So with this same logic, God's omniscience does not take away our free will to choose. But let's go a step further. I felt it is important to explore exactly what kind of free will we are talking about here. So often when we think about free will, we we think about how, how we can do whatever we want. But is that the correct understanding of free will? Because the truth is we all have certain limitations. There are are certain limits of what we can do. So for example, something that my wife always wanted to do is, um, or always wants to be able to do is teleportation. Teleportation. You know, the ability to move move from point A to point B in a very short time or in an instance. I mean, clearly that is not something that we can do even if we wanted to. Maybe with technology, but definitely not on our own, no matter how hard we will it to happen. So while we have free will, it comes with certain limitations, not simply allowing us to literally do whatever we want. With this understanding in mind, the next important question to ask is, can we become righteous on our own? Can we become righteous on our own? Meaning, can we leave our sinful ways and lead a life of holiness and righteous by our own choosing? And this is likely the most important question that arises when we talk about the subject of free will from a Christian perspective. A quick Google will lead you to see several different schools of thoughts, different theologies and debates on this subject, on the subject of God, the sovereignty of God, versus our free will. I will not dive into details for those because there are too much to cover. But it is important to understand that I believe I mentioned similar things before. Most of these different schools of thought they are, that which is came up by different theologians, they are all great thinkers and they are all really serious about their faith. But because of their different understandings of certain parts of the Bible, perhaps also having their own different, very unique Christian experiences, they came up with different theologies in this faith. So I'm just going to end this session by sharing the Methodist view, which is also what I subscribe to with regards to God's sovereignty and our free will. So the founder of John Wesley upholds that we are all fallen sinners who cannot leave the bondage of sin and be reconciled back to God by our own will. So no matter what we do by our own will, we can never do that. And it is God who came down to us by His grace, by the cross, that we can be reconciled back to God. So this part is pretty much agreed by most theologians. This starting part that we are fallen sinners and it is only by the grace of God that we can come back to God. What differs is the next step. John Wesley feels and believes that we have to respond 
to disgrace, to accept it. I like to think about it in this way. It is by the grace of God that we can enter into salvation, that we are justified. So imagine Jesus opening a door to heaven, holding the gate into heaven, a door that can never, never be opened by our own will and action. Only God can open it for us. So there's nothing we can do. You know, we can't pick the lock or anything. There's nothing we can do to open the door. And there we are standing at the gate with Jesus holding open. John Wesley believes that we have to respond to God's invitation to enter into the gate, to receive the salvation. I say again, it is only by grace that the gate is open and that we have the option to walk in. It is only by grace that we even have such an option. But we are to respond to God's invitation. And that to me makes the most sense, logically speaking. I mean, if you go to someone's house, someone have to open the door for you. But ultimately, you choose. You need to respond whether you want to step into that house or not. So in summary to today's question, the short answer will be yes, free will exist even when God is omniscient. Because knowing something will happen is not the same as causing something to happen. Then I went on to explain a bit more on free will, particularly on our limitations that we have. It's not, it's not something that we, we can do whatever we want kind of free will. And I end off with the Methodist view on the part that we have to play in our salvation, how we need to respond to God's grace and invitation. I hope I've answered the question uh, sufficiently. And if any one of you felt that you have more questions regarding this or regarding any other thing, feel free to submit them through the Google form or simply contact me or Pastor Raymond directly. I'm sure we would love to meet up with you all in person or over Zoom. We might not be able to answer all your questions, but I'm sure through our conversation, we can learn some new insight together. Come, let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this uh, opportunity to share, for this platform to address different questions that our young people have regarding our faith, regarding our life. Uh, for today's big question, the idea of free will, that idea that we have the responsibility in our lives because we are free to do what we want, even though with certain limitations. Lord, it help us to ponder deeper on that. Help us to ponder about your grace as well, of what you have done for us in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.